All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our PowerFlex 525 through Connected Components Workbench using a 1203 USB, and then we're gonna go ahead and communicate to it so we can use the control bar down here to start our actual motor and control our motor to do a commissioning test and do everything we need to do. Now I'm gonna show you how to set everything up from your RS Lynx driver, from your actual driver for your 1203 USB to actually getting to a successful upload, then going ahead and controlling your motor through this control bar all in under 10 minutes in this video. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get straight to it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started and uh, just to kind of talk about the environment a little bit, we're gonna have a 1203 USB, right? So we need the 1203 USB driver on our Windows 10 environment. If you don't have your Windows 10, uh, driver you can just download it from the internet again it's really really simple to, to install you just basically click this uh, exe file and click install it's really simple there is a PDF I will have linked below on telling you how to install it on Windows 7 which does work perfectly on Windows 10 you don't have to do anything although if you feel safer you can right click and install this as a compatible Windows 7 so with that said when you install it uh, you'll have the ability to actually, you know, see it inside of your device manager. So if you were to click device manager inside of your computer, you can see device manager right here. And that's where you'll see this prompt right here that shows you the ports and everything. So let me, if I unplug it, you'll see it go away. If I plug it back in, it's going to prompt me to actually connect, um, well, sometimes it prompts me to connect to my, my VM or my actual host because this is a virtual environment. So um, this is a, again, Windows 10 environment. So this is a virtual though. Um, this is not my host. So uh, with that said, the con uh, connected uh, pieces right here that you need to understand as far as the, you know, the, the driver and stuff of, of that nature, you need to look at your port settings. So come into your port settings and, and note that the one key component here is your port number. So your port number is very important because you're gonna be using that in your your RS Lynx setup. So your RS Lynx setup needs to understand where you're communicating through so that it can use that USB uh, simply, you know, as easy as possible. Now, I like to actually use this as, uh, as like default because again, I believe in the simpler things can be, the better they are and, and we often, you know, kind of complex things you know, get our, our working with complex things so we can keep the com communications as simple as possible. That's the best it can be, right? So I like to keep it as a lower number so you can change it whatever you want to. But again, I like to keep it as uh, the lowest number I possibly can. You know, as far as just getting in the double digits sometimes has a problem. So um, this will be a COM3 that we leave it at. I just wanted to show you where that was. So we have this at COM3. Now, now we need to come in and set up our Lynx driver, right? So we're going to come in and set up our Lynx driver. And then now, as you see, I just unplugged it and plugged it back in. So it's going to show as a default. Sometimes you can shut this down and start it back up and it will populate. So that's part of a, a DF1. Uh, back in the, uh, I've been working with DF1 drivers, which is a serial driver for quite a while. If you ever have the problem of un like disconnecting or losing connection, and then when you plug it back in and it's communicating, sometimes you have to stop it and start it. So just understand that when you do that, you come in here to this and you would get off of it. So if you're browsing that driver, you're not gonna be able to actually change anything about it. So I just like to come up here, stop it, and then start it back. So at that point, I would start it back. And then come over here and this sometimes solves the issue and it starts communicating Back to it sometimes you have to completely shut down rs link like i just did before but again i wanted to show you a couple different ways to actually get out of that little uh serial port or serial uh communication type error on a uh, you know rs links so uh making this driver you're going to need a couple things right so i'm not going to talk about how i made this one except for the simple fact that i'm going to pull it up and make another one okay so we're going to come up and we're going to select the rs um 232 df1 driver we're gonna click add new. I like to name mine. So when, as you see, mine actually says uh, ABDF1 uh, 1203 slash USB. I like to change that to, you know, USB or 1203 USB. That's how I got the name. 
Okay, so we're going to come in here and we're going to name this something different. We'll just call this uh, 1203 uh, and then we'll call this EX. So, example. So, uh, then this is where that, that COM port comes in play that we talked about. You change your COM port to COM port 3. This is the device you're going to select. You're going to select the, the scan port device. Okay, so you're using a scan port to actually communicate through and to your driver. So you don't need anything else besides this scan port. That's the default when you're talking to drives or when you're using a uh, 1203 USB, that is going to be your go-to device, okay? You're gonna change your baud rate to the maximum baud rate. Change your, your station number. Uh, don't have your station number matched at like a, a zero 01 because zero 01 generally is going to be the actual 1203 USB. So I like to keep this as something like Maybe like a, you know, in my case, I have a three for my other one. So I'm going to have a four for this one. And then you come over here and you can click auto config. And then that comes in there. You don't have to do auto config though. You can just start it up and then of course it failed because I'm already using that port. So uh, if I wasn't using the other port, it would actually be successful. But again, it is actually using the other port right now. So there's, that's where the conflict comes in play. So I'm, use, I'm trying to use the same COM port down here as here. So th just note that that's, that's one of the things. I just wanted to show you how to make the driver. And again, so we're gonna come in here and delete that. And we're gonna keep our, our driver right here. So now we've, we've understood we have our, our RS Lynx driver. We have everything compatible. We have everything done. You're going to see a ABDSI, right? You're not gonna see your device right now. You're not gonna see, I'm actually connected to a, um, PowerFlex 525, but you're not going to see the device until you actually use connected components. So we're going to go to connected components. And we're going to go to our file. We're going to hit discover. Okay. So in the top right, left hand corner, you're going to hit discover. You're going to use your, your uh, new driver that you just made. This is going to be the AB. We're going to select the AB DSI that we just clicked. All right. So now we're going to actually be connecting to our device. This is actually getting the PowerFlex information. It's uploaded the PowerFlex information. So what we can do here is a couple different things. There's a control bar down here that you can actually use to actually control the motor. Now, I'm gonna show you this. Is you come down here and you in and, and some, some people may have this problem and some people may may not, and this is the reason I'm gonna show you this. I already have this drive set up to talk through Ethernet, so it's actually looking for the start command to come through Ethernet and the speed to come through ethernet not the d uh the dsi which is going to be the dsi that that's the 1203 usb so when i hit start right here it will not start although it still pops up the the control bar right it won't jog it won't start it won't do anything okay so let's close the let's close the uh control bar real quick let's go to parameters and we're going to go to our start parameter which is right here Generally speaking, it will, it will show highlighted points that are not default. You, you can see that I already have this drive set up to talk through Ethernet IP. So we're gonna change this to serial DSI. Okay, we're gonna to change it to serial DSI. So all we need to do right here is change the start source and the speed reference source, okay? Then we can come over here, go back to overview, go to our control bar, and the motor will run at this point in time. So this is where we can test it, right? Now I'm gonna lower the Hertz down because again, I want you to actually see the motor running when I hit the start button. So, and you will see this is actually accelerating. It went to a hurt of four Hertz. You can see that the motor is actually running. It is actually populating and, and showing that it is running. Now I left the cap on the motor, the protective little cap so you could see it. Let's actually stop the motor real quick because there's, there's a, like a there's a little screw on it, right? So there's a it, if you see there's a, a small little um, connector piece of the the output shaft of that motor is just uh, it's fine threads, so it's really really hard to see on the video. So I left a connector piece on it because if I start it now, you might not be able to see it that well, right? It's kind of harder to see that motor running. So what I wanted to actually do is uh, show you that motor running. So I left that connected piece on. So 
So now it's easy to see when that motor is running. You can easily see that. Now I can change the speeds and adjust the speeds as far as that goes. So now that's going at a faster frequency. Now keep in mind this is running a 110 single phase system to power up the drive and it's running three phase out to it to the actual motor. This is a three phase uh, 230 volt motor. So this is actually how we're actually running the motor and we're talking through our 12 OB, 1203 USB driver, right? So we're actually communicating through that. Now it's that simple um, and I, I know that that was a lot to kind of go through. Let's quickly stop this, stop the drive, and stop everything so that we can actually see that. So the key components that you need to remember is you need to have your setup done correctly on your device manager. You need to have your RS Lynx driver talking. You need to have all that done. You need to have the connected components open. You can easily discover it. When you discover it, you need to make sure your proper parameters are here so that you can test your motor and actually go through and do that. Now make sure you, another key thing is when you're done with the control bar, make sure you're done, you, you actually close it because again, you don't want to leave that open. Now, again, when it comes down to it, I like to change this back. I'll change this back to my Ethernet because we did set it up for another video. And now I'll show you that in the other videos that we're doing, how to actually, you know, program it and go through and control it through Ethernet. But again, I wanted to show a, a easy, simple way to set up your 1203 USB to talk to your drives through connected components. So really, really simple really easy just make sure you understand the fundamentals of using a serial port so with all that said we'll see you guys on the next one